Plymouth Pride promotes equality and inclusivity through events and volunteering while fostering education about and respect for people who are LGBTQ+. Julie Thompson spoke with Plymouth Pride President Nicole O'Brien to talk about Pride. Good day. I'm so pleased to welcome Nicole O'Brien, who is the president and founder of Plymouth Pride, for a conversation today. Welcome. Thank you for having me again. So good to have you. Now, Plymouth Pride, um, you were developed. Tell me, wh why, did you, why did you start and found this organization called Plymouth Pride? Basically, in 2019, when we went into the 4th of July parade, at the end of it, we realized that Plymouth was kind of pride-starved. And so we decided that we couldn't go back um, to not having like a big pride events happening. Uh, so that's basically why we started it, so that it would continue, hopefully forever. Okay. Now, let's talk about the Pride Festival, which is going to come up in June. What, how, how many times have you done this now? This, this is going to be our second time. Second, okay. Yep. So the first time was going to be 2020, but nothing happened then. Right. <laughs> um, and then last year we had it at Mayflower. Yep. And this year we are having it at Nelson Park, right okay. on the waterfront. So tell us all about that day. What does it involve? So it's going to be June 26, 11 to 6. Mm -hmm. um, we have tons of entertainment. We have musicians. We have bands. We have dancers. We have um, speakers. Rasan Hall is going to come and speak um, about 3.20 p.m. for anybody that wants to come see him. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have, there might be a wedding. Um, we're going to have a drag story time near the library tent, um, a pet contest. Uh, we have like over 50 vendors, half of them are resources, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of information available for people out there um, so that they can know what's available in our community. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I can't think of anything else offhand, but I mean, there's a lot happening, a lot happening. And this is open to everyone? Open to everybody. Everyone and anyone? Absolutely. And the more people that come and, and understand what Plymouth Pride is, the better. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Now, now d does someone have to sponsor this event for you? So we have um, some sponsors. Our two big sponsors this year are Harbor Health mm -hmm. and Tech Edge. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do have some smaller sponsors. Um, and we've had some individual donations as yeah. well and some small fundraisers that we've done too. So it's been a lot of Because I was going to ask you, obviously things cost money to put on, oh, yeah. especially a festival. Absolutely. Um, and so how, how can people actually help you with that too? So if you go to our website, PlymouthPrideInc.com, there's actually a Venmo link there and yeah. they can make a donation right there if they'd like to. Okay, great. Excellent. Now, aside from the, um, this, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what Pride has meant to the community and what it will mean going forward, but there's other, there's other um, groups and organizations that get together. Talk about First Tuesdays with Pride at the Plymouth Public Library. What is that? So First Tuesdays is basically like an intergenerational group, kind of like a, just meeting up and doing different activities, whether they do like a craft thing or they just kind of talk. We had our first one last month. I wasn't able to be there, um, but we're having the next one this Tuesday. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it, a week from today, yep. the 7th. So that'll be cool. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's basically just a group of people meeting to do what they choose. Yep. It's not really like a very, very organized group. Right. And you also have the Plymouth LB, uh, LGBTQ plus youth support group, which is Tuesdays at 4 at the Plymouth Family Resource Center, and that starts June 8th. So the Plymouth Family Resource Center runs that, yep. and that is at the Plymouth Family Resource Center, okay. and that is available to teens, I believe. Um, and so, yeah, that's a cool group because luckily we, I didn't realize we had made them on the same day at first, but mm -hmm. luckily the times don't overlap. Right. Um, so they're able, if they want to go to both, they could. Yes. You know? And there's two other groups that meet, the PFLAG, um, which is in, in um, Duxbury, mm -hmm. and Shagley meetings, which are also in Duxbury. Right. So Duxbury also has a, a, a very strong support of, of Pride. Yep, the Duxbury UU Church um, supports, I guess, uh, has those meetings at their church. Um, and the PFLAG group is a nationwide group yeah. for parents and families. Um, and then the Shagley is a, is a part of the Agley groups that they have, which are all over the place too. Um, so that's South Shore Agley. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why they're, you know, Shagley. And mm -hmm. it gets tricky mm -hmm. with the oh, two sure. S's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, they're awesome too because they're, they're all for the teens and that's one of the big things that we're working on right now is to try to get some youth programming going. Right. So we're going to try to do um, some kind of a teen party or dance mm -hmm. or event of some sort hopefully in July. Okay. Um, and we're trying to get a scholarship program going and we're also trying to do a, um, a camp 
thing where we can send like a, a youth from Plymouth to camp hopefully right. this summer. Good. Um, like an LGBTQ plus camp. So that should be really cool and very inclusive and awesome Excellent. for them. Yeah. Now talk to me about how since 2019 Plymouth has embraced Plymouth Pride. Well, Plymouth, in 2019, when we went through the 4th of July parade, people were jumping out of their chairs and hooting and hollering and clapping and so happy to see us. Um, so that was pretty exciting and that was what led us to the point where we um, became a nonprofit. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, obviously 2020 happened, um, which led people to be a little bit more divisive. Um, and so there's a little bit more pushback, I would say, everywhere mm -hmm. um, because of the divisiveness. But I would also say that, you know, there's pushback coming from our direction, too. And we are here and we're not going anywhere. So we're going to have pride no matter what. Let me ask you something. So during 2020, when, when COVID was at its worst and most people had to communicate via Zoom or, or online, did you see an uptick in people that could um, take advantage of, of what pride had to offer? Or were there less people? Well, so for us, we had just became a nonprofit in December of 2019. Yeah. So we didn't have a ton of programming happening yet in the mm -hmm. beginning of 2020, say. Um, but for sure, all of the other places that had anything happening um, saw an uptick. I mean, yeah. people, the LGBT community was hit hard by COVID mm -hmm. because people that are in the LGBT community have tons of social service jobs. So, you know, they're affected by it a lot more. You know, there's a lot of um, frontline workers and stuff like that. So, right. what obstacles do you see that you, as the founder and president of Plymouth Pride, have to overcome? Plymouth Pride, in general, has to overcome, and our society, our little cosmos here in the Plymouth area, has to overcome. Well, for me, it's you know. Um, I guess it's, well, with the community, it's a little bit easier because obviously we are a group. We can all embrace each other. We're together mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we can support each other and make different kind of programs happen. And that will create change just in itself by just naturally happening. Right. Um, and as far as like for me, the, the difficulties that I have are more on a personal level, you know, just trying to keep things in check and stay positive. And although there have been some things that have been pushed back or, you know, uh, red tape things that I have to deal with, I like to try to keep that out of the, you know, picture for most people because, you know, really this is about having an inclusive and safe space for people. Right. So I'm trying to keep that part out for everybody else so mm -hmm. that they can feel like that they have a safe space to be. Right. They're all together. They can meet. They can hang out, you know, whether it's our first Tuesdays at the library that have a handful of people, maybe 10, or an event like our festival, which we last year had almost 2,000. Right. You know, we want to make sure that people feel safe and comfortable and happy in their own community. Right. And that's really kind of the point. There's not much any one person or one group can do about the information flow that we're getting from the national level, or even sometimes from the state level we really can only take care of our own backyard or start with our own backyard. And staying positive, I'm sure, is difficult. It's difficult for a lot of different groups in this time frame. Um, talk to the, if you, if you feel comfortable, the political aspects of what you're trying to do with Pride. I mean, when we started in 2019, 2020 hadn't really happened yet. Obviously, there were still political um, things going on, but I think that there was this vision of a really moving forward dramatically at that time. And I think that 2020 kind of put it in perspective for people more to realize like, oh no, there's you know a lot of progress, but this still could be more progress. Um, so I think that you know, there's definitely been some changes to what we, in, intended originally and what 2020 has changed for mm -hmm. us um, and for everybody really right. um, so you know we're 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 hoping to just keep on moving forward like I said and keep things positive and keep on making our events happen mm -hmm. and you know um, you know there's only so much that we can do individually but as a group mm -hmm. we can make a much bigger difference right um, so you know if people want to go to our website PlymouthPrideInc.com they can join, they can be a volunteer, they can be a sponsor, they mm -hmm. can donate, 
They, they can, can perform. Perform. Yeah. They can just come to Pride and yeah. support the people that are there. So yeah. there's so many different ways that people can participate and um, keep this moving forward, you know? And do you ever get to interact with um, the school departments or the school systems? Um, are you ever asked to talk to them or to consult with them on any of these issues that you're, you're seeing, especially with the youth? So we haven't really um, met with them much or consult had any consultations really because we really are just kind of starting out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been two years now of, I would say it's really been more like one year of us really, really actively being able to do what we want to do yeah. um, or start doing what we want to do. We are still a baby when mm -hmm. it comes to all the prides. Um, we don't really, you know, we don't have that much experience. Um, do you think that would be helpful? Do you think, I mean, do you think the school systems in general understand the pressures and the, um, the problems that the LBGTQ plus community go through? So I think it depends. Years. I think it depends on what kind of staff they have at each school individually, um, what the leadership feels like, what the student body is like. I think it probably depends on a lot of things. Um, but for instance, tomorrow morning we're having um, our flag raising at mm -hmm. the town hall, and MAP Academy is bringing their whole LGBTQ club mm -hmm. as a field trip to the um, flag raising, and they're going to speak. So we do have some interaction within the schools. MAP Academy is an outside the box kind of school, so right. it makes sense that we would, you know, work with them first. Sure. But hopefully, you know, Plymouth North, Plymouth South, Silver Lake, all the other schools around here, mm -hmm. we would love to work with them, mm -hmm. with the kids, you know. And that's one of the big things is that we want to make that youth event happen in June, and I'm sorry, in July, because a lot of kids we heard from weren't able to go to Youth Pride in Boston. It's far for them. Sure. You know, a lot of them is. don't have a license. Yeah, you know? right, so. right. So that's one thing you're working on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How close are you to getting that scheduled? Pretty close. Pretty okay. easy. I'm actually I'm waiting for tomorrow to get a lot of feedback from Good. the kids to be honest with you. Okay. Excellent. Anything else you want to put out there during this interview? Um there's so much happening at that festival. It's hard to to pick one thing, but I mean really I would say the funnest things that are going to be happening that day are going to be the pet contest, mm -hmm. the drag story time, um Obviously, all the performers all day are going to be awesome. We have a bunch of dance troops that are coming. Uh, we have a performance group that's coming. So there should be tons and tons of amazing stuff happening that day. So yeah. I would just say, everybody come out. Tell your friends. Bring your family. Bring everybody. And what day and time is that? It is June 26th, 11 to 6 at Nelson Park. In okay, Plymouth. great. Thank you, as always. Thank you so much And I'm for sure we'll talk me. to you again. Thanks. To get involved and learn more, visit PlymouthPrideInc.com. If you've enjoyed this video by The Local Scene, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.